your brother, your friend, back again for another installment. Five ways the life story of Thomas Alva Edison changed my life. Let's get it popping. Number one, how you see yourself matters. Number two, find a way to serve many people and you will be rewarded. Number three is reinvest in yourself. Number four is everything comes to he that hustles while he waits. Number five, go on a crusade, go on a campaign, never give up, never give in. This book was so electrifying, it was insane. The power in the life story of Thomas Edison is incredible. That's why I wanna share these five things that I learned from reading his autobiography. Number one is how you see yourself matters. I do a lot of videos on self-image and how you think about yourself and how you see yourself determines your reality. Well, it may not be known, but Thomas Edison was actually seen as a dunce, a fool, a idiot growing up in school. His fellow students and his teachers treated him as if he was basically a dunce and they made it known through ridicule and through concerns expressed to the teacher uh, through the teacher to the to his mother but at one point the mother had enough of it and she heard the teacher say that he was a dunce he was a fool and this was in front of little Thomas but his mama wasn't having it she said my Thomas, a dunce, a fool, he's smarter than you and everybody in this school. And Thomas Edison said that that early faith, that high expectation, that love and reassurance that, the, that his mother expressed for him made him want to live up to those expectations. And it created a positive self-image. And he said that my mother was a teacher. His parents were from Canada. He said my mother was a early school teacher she knew that how you treat a child and the expectations you hold for the child can affect how you develop the child and so from there he started to see himself different and his mother homeschooled him so he didn't have to deal with the idiot teachers number two is very very important it is called Find a way to serve many and you will be handsomely rewarded. What does that mean? Thomas Edison was a quirky child. He was always studying and up late reading on different topics like electricity, uh, natural history, sciences. But he created an invention as a young man, as a young adult, which was the vote recorder. And it was a more accurate way to count votes because he realized a lot of times in politics, and in government were actually miscounting or making mistakes with counting the votes. He brought it to um, the politicians, the local politicians, and the politicians told him, yo, this is a brilliant invention, to be honest with you, but it serves no purpose here in, in politics because th no real politician will want accurate votes. We want to skew things and you know, manipulate things. Now, he didn't say that directly about himself, but he said that in general about the po other politicians. So one thing I love about Thomas Edison is that he said he made a vow. Actually, he said, I'm never, ever going to invent anything else unless it's going to serve my fellow man. But that's actually the secret to success. Jesus said the greatest among you will be the least among you. He will serve the rest. So Thomas Edison was so great because he created so much value and served so many different people, right? So find a way to serve many, create value for many, and you will be handsomely rewarded. The next one, number three is reinvest in yourself, baby. Thomas Edison was unique in the fact that he was kind of quirky and weird, but after he made that vow to invent something that service services humanity on a large scale he actually was working for a gold company where it was a gold and uh stock ticker uh that he had he was a manager basically over 
a gold and stock ticker uh, department basically it's kind of it's kind of old history um, so it's hard to explain but they had some machines that counted the gold and counted the different stocks but the machines were just so inadequate and old he decided how can I better serve humanity and that was one of the ways let me figure out a way to improve this stock ticker and take out a patent on this gold and stock ticker so he tinkered with it figured out a new way to improve it and the president of the company he brought it to the president of the company and the president of the company said how much do you want for this he said i'm not sh he didn't say i wasn't sure but in his head he wasn't sure he was going to say five thousand dollars but he didn't mention the price he just waited and the actual president told him i'll offer you forty thousand dollars so forty thousand dollars for one for the usage of his patented gold and stock ticker this is in the 1800s this is crazy amounts of dough if you got 40 racks right now for a deal or for an invention you would probably consider like oh wow i got a nice amount of money but imagine that in the 1800s that was his first small fortune but what did he do with it he reinvested it in himself he totally reinvested it in um a workshop so that he can create and churn out more inventions workshop and factory so he can ch churn out more inventions and more um products for servicing humanity his fellow man the next uh point number four fourth thing i learned was everything comes to him who hustles while he waits in the front of the book there is that statement that's a direct statement from thomas edison he said everything comes to him who hustles while he waits and you can see that thing all throughout his life story because thomas edison didn't just become a genius overnight from his early childhood he would stay up at night making experiments and experimenting and creating different things and always reading and consistently growing and learning so while he was waiting to move on to the next stage he was hustling he was studying he was reading and so after the golden stock ticker company he was working for he went to go work for western union but while he was working at western union he was constantly making inventions and he was very persistent that also goes into going on a crusade which is the next one and never giving up um and just being indefatigable just non-stop persistence he would try and present his inventions to the Western Union president owner, the president of the, of the Western Union, but um, the president wasn't having it. He wouldn't hear him out and he wasn't listening to him. So what he did was he continued to hustle while he waited and he actually came up with an advancement to uh, the telegraph. The telegraph would um, only send and receive on one in one way. It was like a unilateral thing. So you would get a message and then you have to wait till it's over and send a message but he came up with a duplex telegraph where you can send and receive simultaneously so but he used the same uh, amount of uh, wiring as the regular telegraph so he would save companies or anybody that worked with a massive amounts of money by by allowing them to send and receive messages simultaneously along the same amount of space so basically you get more bang for your buck double the bank for your buck but the president wasn't hearing him so he was persistent and the president came across an issue where there was a disconnection of the wire between uh, New York and Albany and they had to figure out where specifically there was the issue and um, they found the source well Edison found the source but he said if I fix this issue you have to hear all my inventions he made a deal with them so he provided that service to the president president said man thanks you fixed the problem you um i'm gonna give i'm gonna fulfill my side of the bargain my side of the contract he looked at the inventions and realized yo these are amazing of course gave him another fortune and signed a option contract with him to buy any of his future inventions so of course he left the um left the western union company went on to to invent the triplex telegraph and a bunch of different um, telegraphs and he just kept churning out inventions so everything comes to him who hustles while he waits if you're fighting for something you're looking after a goal you're shooting for something don't stop just because people aren't believing in you don't stop because you're not there because what you're doing is building up so much equity so much value in yourself 
by reading, working out, taking care of yourself, um, envisioning, um, reviewing your goals. And then when that time comes, you're going to harvest a lot, just like Thomas Edison did. Number five is go on a crusade, baby. Go on a campaign for your goals. This man was so persistent. He was tireless in terms of his his fervor and his passion and his fight for achieving things. People say that, oh, uh, he failed a thousand times. Man, they don't even understand it. He failed like 10,000 times, but he never lost sight of his ultimate goal and his dream and hope. I'll give you an example. With the, with the, um, the light bulb, the thing is, is that there were already some developments with the light bulb, the light bulb, but it had to, he had to create, he had to solve multiple problems and he was extremely patient. He was infinitely patient. So were his, um, his assistants and he had to create a vacuum wherein, uh, the oxygen couldn't get into the light bulb. So they had to figure out ways and solve problems to create the proper vacuum. So he solved that problem, but then he had to create a proper filament he was using platinum but platinum wasn't working it was like the strongest metal but it would melt so he had to come up with something um, better he had to solve the issue and there were so many people doubting him and tearing him down didn't believe in him but he kept persisting and of course he found that it was carbon the carbon filament but the carbon filament he had to wrap around um, the, car the carbon he had to wrap around an actual filament and he didn't know what to use so he had to figure it out and end up finding that it was bamboo this was after trying everything in the workshop everything he can put his hands on he tried and failed and failed and failed and failed and failed and failed do you know how much money he put into that so that we can have life today but do you understand that he never fell into despair he never gave into hopelessness he just kept going knowing that with enthusiasm and optimism that he would reach his goal. So go on a crusade. When you have a, a, a goal you're trying to get after, smash that goal, keep going. Even if you run into a thousand failures, never be fatigued, never get given to despair, keep going. Once he found that bamboo, it wasn't the end. He had to search and check over 1300 varieties of bamboo. He paid men to go to Southeast Asia, to go to mainland um, Asia, he uh, paid people to go to Japan, to go to different parts of Africa, um, or excuse me, different parts of uh, South America and the Amazon, searching and looking at all the different varieties of bamboo in India, um, and then checking each and every solitary bamboo uh, fiber. And it wasn't just the bamboos, the different species, it had to be specific parts of the bamboo that they tried because certain parts would work better than other ones. And then you finally got the solution for that. And then we came up with the, fil the filament for the light bulb. But the whole point is, is that he constantly went on a crusade. It was the same with the telephone. It was the same with the, phon the phonograph that he created. It was the same with so many other inventions that he had to create it was a process of a thousand different problems basically that he had to solve but he just was persistent he was dog he was a dogged just indomitable willpower just was pushing through but it was a lot of enthusiasm a lot of faith um and a lot of study so those are the five ways that thomas edison's life story changed and positively affected my life please tell me what you think hopefully you read the book Again, it's Francis Arthur Jones. Uh, check the caption for more info. Your brother, your friend, back again for another installment. Make large plans, for they have magic to stir man's blood. Bless up.